Hey guys, Zom Fox here, and today we are doing the Week 3 Power Rankings for the USFL season. So, last time we had the Week 2 Power Rankings naturally, and now it's time for Week 3 as the new games have happened. A couple of teams have changed quite a lot, actually, and I mean like legitimately by quite a lot. Some have literally stayed the same. So, overall, it was a pretty crazy week and a lot of things happened. And now that we're a couple weeks in, we actually do know for sure how some of these teams are. It's no longer just, oh, they had one game or they had a little bit of practice. We now know more of, like, what the teams actually are and what they're built upon. So, without further ado, let's get started. Coming in at number eight are the Pittsburgh Maulers. There's no change here. Even though their offense did a lot better in the second week of the season, I'm not really moving them. The simple reason is just their stats prove that they're the worst team in the league. Their point differential, which is essentially how you do over the course of the season, is in minus 21. So they've gotten outscored 21 points in both games in total. And then their total points scored is third worst in the league at 26. So even though they had a great game, overall they're still pretty bad and they're bad on point differential. And in points allowed, they're pretty bad as well as they've allowed 44, which is the second worst in the entire league. So if your team can't really defend and can't score that well, it's kind of hard for me to move you. There's not really much to show. It's just literally like this graphic because that's all I need to show. This team is just not that good. Coming in at 7th is the team that beat the Maulers in the first week, the Tampa Bay Bandits. Yeah, they moved down a lot. They moved down from 1st to 7th. That is definitely the biggest change of the week. It is totally deserved. So their first week, as I mentioned, they played one good half and then were terrible the rest. Well, once again, I go back to my total points scored and point differential stats, and you can see that this team isn't the best. They have 20 total points. That's second worst in the entire league. They have Point differential is minus 17, which is also the second worst in the entire league. And as you can tell, it, both them and the Mars are by pretty wide margin of being the worst in point differential. And the worst part is in total yardage, they're the worst team in the league. You shouldn't expect that, but they are. Their total yards is 438, which is the worst in the league. So if they can't really, so it goes back to the same thing. If they can't really score and they're not winning by a ton, it's kind of hard to look at them as this legitimately good team. The Jordan Talmu has been far worse than I pretty much anyone expected and the worst part they have the worst turnover margin in the entire league by a wide wide margin they're minus five on turnovers so they've given up five turnovers versus how many they've gained and stuff is three worse than the guys than the generals and stars are both at minus two so the team can't protect the ball they can't really score and they can't defend insanely the, they're only above the Maulers because they beat the Maulers, and the Maulers have just shown that they pretty much are bad at everything. The, so, it's just, I mean, Bandits, they deserve to be second worst in the league, especially considering how great their coaching staff is supposed to be, and I think is. It's really a shame they're this bad. Coming in at number six are the Michigan Panthers. They're six pretty much because their team is showing that they're really good defensively. They've only allowed 19 points on defense, which is a pretty big deal, especially considering the fact their offense scored 18. The only flaw is that they've kind of given up points due to, like, fumbles and stuff that they get returned. But in terms of the actual offense versus defense purely, their defense is only allowing 19 points in the game. That's the best in the league. And when you're allowing the least amount of points in the league, because that's literally averaging less than 10 points a game you're giving up, that's a huge deal. So the fact that they're only allowing 19, and yes, the breakers are very close, only one behind, but once you get past the breakers in them, there's no team that's really close to them. So their defense is fantastic. Their offense is very skeptical. Shea Patterson shows that he's decent. It's just it's not giving them wins. Because in their yardage stats aren't terrible. It's just they're not scoring. It hurts a lot when your kickers miss kicks. It hurts a lot when you're trying to go for these like fourth downs and stuff and it just doesn't add up. Overall, the team is just a really good defensive team. When you look at their analytics, their point differential is minus 9. Of a team that has lost both their first games, that's great, especially when you have a team that's 1-1 one one, who's almost twice as bad as you. But your total point score is only 18. That's terrible, but that also shows your defense is great. It's just this team is here because their defense is great, but their offense is insanely whack. So I'm hoping that they can get better. I'm not going to move them because I don't think they should be, and I think the Bandits should be below them because from what we've seen, the Panthers could definitely beat the Bandits. 
Coming in at number five are the Gamblers. This is mainly them moving up, not because of any true analytics, but just because their offense proved that they can be this legitimate presence, which I did not feel like they were the first week. I said the first week they didn't really earn their win because the Panthers kind of gave it to them, and the stats definitely show that that was definitely true. But this week in week two, they show they're not that. Even though they lost, they moved up because they played so well against the Stallions. They only lost by five. And in terms of their overall play, it was solid. The only thing that wasn't solid was Clayton Thorson. He was terrible. His stats were awful. 13 for 27 with three picks to two touchdowns. That's terrible. Kenji Bahar wasn't much better. But the running ball was great. Thompson had 5.8 yards per carry on 16 attempts. That's incredible. That's how you win games. The team played great. They got a defensive touchdown. Will likely is his will likely win defensive player of the week. He was fantastic fantastic this week so their defense is insanely solid in terms of getting those big plays and that's why they were in the game so i'm moving them up but i'm not moving them up that high because i feel like in terms of the teams that i have above them their quarterback is the worst of all of them by far and even though they have a solid running game and a solid defensive group because northrop was great and now will likely was even better i'm just i'm not going to move them up that high they did lose but they lost to an insanely good team Credit where credit's due, they deserve to be moved up. But this team, despite being as good as they are, could be better in a decent amount of ways, mainly quarterback. But they deserve to be moved up because of that. It's not about the you know big stats in this case. It's just about the fact that they have a great running game and they have great defensive players. And it's deserving to be a mid-team. They're not awesome. They're not terrible. They prove that they can score, but their quarterback is hasn't shown that he's a legit quarterback. Coming at number four are the Stars. Philadelphia Stars come in at number four mainly due to the fact that their quarterback is arguably the best in the league. I don't put him as number one. I think right now I'd, I'd hold off about that, but he is definitely one of the best. Put it simply, Brian Scott has been great. The team has a slightly above point differential at plus one, which isn't great, but their point scored is 47, which is third in the entire league. Now it's nowhere near number one or two, but it's still solid. As for the actual mark and why I'm putting this team above the Gamblers is mainly due to the fact that, one, Brian Scott leads the league in points with 33 because quarterback touchdowns do count. He has 33, so he's number one. He's number one in passing touchdowns at four, and he's number one in passing yards at 474. The fact that he's leading all those stats is a pretty big deal. It really does show that he is like a legit guy, and he can be a legit quarterback, which is the main thing, especially when he's leading the passing by over like 60 yards in two games. It's pretty incredible. The team, aside from him, are pretty good as well. Their passing yards game are naturally leading the league. Their kick return average is a big one, is also leading the league at 31.1 kick return yards. So they're getting the ball to a position to help Brian Scott, which, considering the fact that he's also getting a ton of yards himself, shows that this team really is good at just getting yards. Now, some of their... Pieces could be better naturally. Brian Scott's fumbles and stuff has led them to being one of the worst teams in turnover margin. Them and the Generals both a negative two. But aside from that, essentially, Brian Scott has just been a legitimately good player for them. And because of that, I feel like it's deserving to put them on number four. I think they're definitely a top half team, even though it did take a close game to beat the Maulers. I, I don't think they're a top three team, but I think they're solid at this place, and they definitely deserve to be here. Coming in at number three are the New Jersey Generals. The Generals are just here because, <clears throat> honestly, I'm just putting them here because I think they're just playing solid. I think they lost to a really good team last week in the Stallions and kept it close. And even though their offense wasn't great against the Panthers, DeAndre Johnson still looks like a legitimately great quarterback. Overall, this is a genuinely hard game to look or hard team to look at in a sense because they're not playing awesome, but they're playing good, if you know what I mean. Like, they're not winning their games convincingly. They're not losing their games convincingly. And yes, it's only been one game each, but like, you, you know what I mean again. <clears throat> but supposedly, DeAndre Johnson isn't even a running back. Naturally, he's a quarterback, and he's fourth in rushing yards this season. And he's been playing really solid and then in terms of the team themselves I mean they're just not playing bad they're playing solid all around and I think because of that it's definitely fair to put them here because they just get the job done as a team and that's what you really want to see and 
I genuinely do like this team a lot. Luis Perez still has the third best QBR in the league as well. And even though he didn't have a necessarily great game, personally, both quarterbacks aren't playing bad, and they genuinely can seem like they can win with either guy involved. And when you have either guy being able to be in the game and they're solid, that's a good thing. And then to put it simply, it's not like this team is really in the bottom of anything or in the top of anything. They're just genuinely a solid team that is average on pretty much most things. And it's better to be average than bad at a lot of things. And because of that, I think it being number three is fair. I think they're better than the two teams below them because of the fact that their quarterbacks are both solid versus the gamblers who don't have a solid quarterback or the stars who have a solid quarterback that still has turnover issues. So because of that, I'm putting the Generals at three. They're solid, but they're not better than the top two teams. Coming in at number two is the New Orleans Breakers. Now, let's just get started by showing this as a main reason why. They're second in total points at 57, which is four behind number one and an insane 10 above number three. But as you can see on the right side, that's nothing. They are point differential better than the second place Birmingham Stallions, by a just absurd 28 points. There is absolutely zero shot they continue this at this rate. It's just it's just almost impossible to average 18 points in a margin of victory in every game. But it's, it's just the fact to show you that this team is all around solid. Their defense doesn't give up a ton of points, and their offense scores a lot. Some proof is just in this cold hard stats like normal so not only do they lead the league in yards per game but they're second in points allowed they're one point behind the panthers for the number one team on points allowed and then they also lead the league in turnover margin which is how many turnovers you get versus you give away they're plus four so so far they're averaging a game where they get two more possessions than the other team based on turnovers that's great I mean, it's just solid. Their punt return average, another sneaky stat of 13 and a half yards is the best in the league. If you're leading a stat like that, those are those like analytical things, those money ball type of analytics that are going to show your team is solid. David Bellamy leads the league in sacks at four. So why isn't this team number one? I'm just not believing in Kyle Slaughter. It's just, it's just that simple. I want to see another game of him playing like he did the last one. I get that he's, like, doing really solid overall in both games combined. Like, he now looks a lot better. His 416 yards are second in the league. Even though it's far second to Brian Scott, they're still second in the league. And uh, he's only thrown one interception so far. Like, he's been playing solid, but he's fourth in the league in QB, QBR, which is also solid. But I'm just not looking at him and saying that, this is the best QB or one of the best QBs. And I'm just not fully bought into it. I want to see one more game with them playing great like that. And if I do, this team definitely can be won. Especially considering that if you've done process of elimination, you know who's above them. And they play this week. So whoever wins that is... Going to be definitely probably the one seed unless they, on um, my power rankings, unless they both play just insanely terrible, but that, that's, there was no chance. Yeah, New Orleans, they definitely deserve to be number two. They're number one or two for sure, but I'm just not ready to give them number one. So that's how I feel about that team. Coming in at number one are the Birmingham Stallions. I genuinely think that this is easy for me to say. I think this is pretty easy to say. I think people are getting starstruck by the fact that, wow, the Breakers blew out a team. This team definitely deserves to be here. The point differential is second in the league. Now, as I mentioned in the New Orleans segment, yes, it's by a lot less, but plus nine is still second best in the league. And in terms of total points, their 61 points that they've put up is the best in the league. Now, that means their defense is doing an awesome job, but I feel like it's important to put this team here. Because simply put, their offense and their overall yardage is why this team is great. The biggest and most important thing is to be good at margins. This team is. Third down percent is arguably one of the most important stats. How much, how m much do you get to keep the ball when you're hitting that third down? They have a 41.7 completion percentage on third down, which essentially means they're going to get the f first down most of the time. That's a really big stat to be in the lead for because of just how important it is. And then 
once you get past that one, you look at their kicking points. Brandon Aubrey is a dude who is a soccer player. He literally just started playing football for the USFL, and he leads the league in kicking points at 16, and he hasn't missed a kick yet. He's been solid. And then Victor Bolden Jr. leads the league in all-purpose yards because he leads the league in like kick return yards, but that's also because he has so many attempts. But he's leading the league by almost 100. His 370 is literally just a 89 above TJ Logan, who's second. That's great. Like, that's genuinely awesome. And then the biggest thing is the fact that their quarterback, I mean, he's great. Like, J.M.R. Smith is genuinely great. The fact that he's doing as good as he is and he was going to be the guy on the bench is kind of insane. He leads the league in QBR right now. He's playing a game and a half, so all of his stats are kind of not in his favor, like when compared to like Brian Scott or Kyle Slaughter, because he didn't play that like first half because of Alex Mago. But he leads the league in QBR by a bit. And overall, the home field advantage is truly real. Every other game, there's like less than 200 people there. But the Stallions have a genuinely like big fan base who go there and give them a home field advantage. So overall, they definitely have an advantage there, and their team is just really good. I, I know their defense is kind of lacking a bit, but you got to give them their credit. And to put it simply, this matchup between the Stallions and the Breakers is the big deal matchup. Whoever wins that game is going to be viewed as the best team, unless they both play pretty bad and New Jersey completely blows out their opponent. But barring that that happens, it's going to be a pretty cool thing to see. And I guess we'll just wait till Saturday at 8 o'clock for that game. So those are my week three power rankings. If you guys want to talk about what you think power rankings are, if I should have put a team higher or lower, discuss it in the comments. Um, as always, this is Zon Fox. If you enjoy this content and want to be notified as soon as I upload videos, as I do this, the week review, and my betting picks for the week, all every week on pretty much the same day or two, subscribe and hit the bell notification. And as always, have a great night.